The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome wherever you are joining us from to St James the Great Haydock where today we celebrate the feast of the most holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God the Father and his only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, for he has shown that he loves us. Holy, 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 when our eyes have seen the Lord of hosts, we echo the words of Isaiah, Woe is me, I am doomed. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our iniquity to be removed and our sins wiped out. So we meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit with confession on our lips. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the book of Exodus. With the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the mountain of Sinai in the early morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood with him there. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Lord, Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my people come with us, I beg. True, they are a headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins and adopt us as your heritage. This is the word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, to you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed, Lord God of our fathers. To you, glory and praise for evermore. Blessed your glorious holy name. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed in the temple of your glory. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed on the throne of your kingdom. To you, glory and praise for evermore. You are blessed who gaze into the depths. To you, glory and praise forevermore. You are blessed in the firmament of heaven. To you, glory and praise forevermore. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the holy kiss. 
all the saints send you greetings. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, the God who is, who was, and who is to come. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much, that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Two's company, three is a crowd. It takes two to tango. Just the two of us. T for two, just me and you. A random selection of truisms, trite sayings, snatches from songs that stick in the mind. They stick in the mind because they bear witness to a truth about human nature. That two is a great deal more than twice one when we're talking about human beings. The difference between being alone and being with somebody else is immeasurable. Think of Robinson Crusoe when he discovers footsteps on what he has taken so far to be a deserted island. And think of the way that we long for the day when lockdown is over and self-isolation is over, when we can meet and be together again. Yet at the same time, these truisms suggest that two is a natural number for community. If there are two people, there is community. If they belong to one another, they are somehow fulfilled in a way that no solitary person is. I remember what a long time ago I was at a wedding when the vicar said, you must know things about each other that no one else knows and do things for each other that no one else does and in this way be something for each other that nobody else is and that will be your marriage. The Greek philosopher Plato thought that two was the first number because he reasoned one is meaningless with, without something else of the same type to which it can be compared. And so we tend to think of two as a, a very natural number. And even in larger groups, things tend to resolve themselves into two. Politics, politics that works, tends to resolve itself into two parties, left and right, Conservative and Labour, Republican and Democrat. If you want to give examples from other countries, remember I said politics that works. Opinions often boil down to two options, either or. Teams play one another. Either we are alone or we are in relation to another even a negative relation where there is anger or hatred. In wars, the complexities usually resolve themselves into 
two sides, one against the other. Yet, the teaching of Christianity, of the church, its deepest conviction is that three is the true number of relationship, not two. How can this be? How can the God who is three create a reality that seems to resolve itself into two? The answer is at once both simple and complicated. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Now, biblical scholars uh, have argued for years and often dismissed the oddity of the two possible numbers, two or three, as a, a Jewish, a Semitic idiom, a, a, a figure of speech. But whilst this might be true, I think that Jesus is saying something else. What he is saying is if that there are two gathered together, there is also, by the nature of things, three. The two can only be two because there is between them a relationship. And this is the third thing, the third element. Between the two, there is always another. It might be another thing, which not only make the two be in relationship to one another, but often make them to be what they are. Two football teams would not be football teams if there wasn't a football to relate them to one another. A husband and wife wouldn't exist as husband and wife without marriage. You can't be unmarried and still a husband or a wife. The relationship is a kind of being. Sadly, in our world, not all relationships are relationships of love. We can be bound to one another by hatred, by competition, by anger. Yet even there, it's often love that lurks at the hearts of things. We sometimes hate people because we want them to be objects of love. We hate them because we want to love them, but we can't. There's nearly always a germ of love to be found in great hatred. A love which is never quite extinguished. The bitterness of a marriage gone wrong often witnesses to that. And the death of one partner so often reveals it. There is a, a beautiful line, a beautiful moment in Evelyn Waugh's novel, Brideshead Revisited, where Cordelia, the youngest and most devout of the four flight children, speaking about her sister Julia's attitude to their wayward brother Sebastian, says, she never loved him as we do. She's speaking to Charles Ryder, the narrator. And he picks up on what she's saying and comments. Do. The word reproached me. There was no past tense in Cordelia's verb to love. Of its nature, there is indeed no past tense in the verb to love. The Trinity is the proof of this. In our world, lots of things are alienated from their own nature. The sadness of the present season is that we are in a alienated from our own true natures. To be sociable, to be sociable and to be loving beings with one another. Lots of things are in the deepest sense, not quite themselves. And this is why we seek redemption. This is why the Holy Trinity is the sign of our redemption. With them, the two are always three, because the two are always in love, and love is in them. And one day, by their grace, 
there will be love for all. Love without a past tense. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We profess the faith of the Church, as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and give thanks to God for his goodness. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love, profound, a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. We pray for our own land, for peace between men and women of every race, creed and colour. To you, Lord, maker of all, every life is sacred. We pray for justice and equity throughout the earth. Extend to all your peace, pardoning, love, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord. We pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Pray for your people in every land. We pray for those who lead the churches, for our bishops, for Bishop Glynn, for Paul, Bishop of this diocese. We pray for leaders of the church in every community. working to spread the good news of your love this difficult time. Extend to all your people salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. 
We pray for all who are victims of coronavirus, for those sick in hospital, those in care homes, for all doctors and nurses and those caring for them, for those researching a cure to this disease. all those isolated and lonely. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice Holy Father, Spirit, Son, Mysterious Godhead, three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. We pray for all those who have died recently, for those who have left this world to go to their reward in heaven. Amongst them we pray for Eileen Lee, John Shaw, Alan Dorber, for all victims of COVID-19 and for those who have died because of racial hatred and injustice. We pray for all whose anniversaries fall at this time, for those who died in the Woodpit disaster in 1878, for David Martin, Thomas Holmes, Harold Wilson, Bill Barnett, Alice Watson, Lily Draper, Arthur Sim, Gordon Mather, Elizabeth Worsick, May Wadsworth, Malcolm Hart, Baby Liam Peter Unsworth, Duncan Black, Raymond Mills. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let your mercy shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty and bounty, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of blessed Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, Saint James, the Apostles and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The Lord God, Almighty Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the Holy and Undivided Trinity, God, save you and bring you to that heavenly city where he reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.